Okay guys, welcome back. I've had several viewers uh, ask me to do an up-close video of the Alice Chalmers Combine. So we're getting ready to do red clover seed and we'll make a little video here of the Alice Chalmers 72. So first of all, what makes a 72 different is that throat right there. Rather than the canvas throat like on the 60 and 66, we have a uh, chain slat throat. Uh, we also have that ends pick up there and if I give you the side profile here on that you can see that the fingers on the ends pick up are actually flat iron stock and those work real well to keep uh, debris out and uh, to pick up the clover windrows very gently. Uh, moving over to the side here another difference is that uh, this shaft, this is driving that uh, the throat, slat and, and chain, this shaft right here is a front beater. Yeah, it's a metal front beater, very similar to, you know, the combines that were made after this. The Massey uh, 750 has that front beater on it, but that front beater serves the effect of if there's a slug coming up the throat to the cylinder, that uh, that front beater will spread that throat out or will the front beater will spread the plug before it hits the cylinder so it evens up the feeding rate of the cylinder uh, last thing I wanted to talk about on the cylinder here you can see that new bolt there so we have found that uh, to prevent cylinder bars from being thrown off if you do hit some debris uh, you needed to take vibration out of the cylinder so that you were able to run that cylinder at full RPM and uh, run your gap. You know, the book, I don't know what it calls for, maybe a 16th, or it calls for a very uh, close gap between the uh, threshing plates and the cylinder bars. Well, I have widened that gap out of here, but I do run that cylinder at full RPMs, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's like 1,050 or 11 or 1,200 RPMs. You're moving that cylinder pretty fast. When you move that cylinder fast, you need to take all the vibration out. So one thing that I have done is I have balanced that cylinder. Uh, these cylinder bars were held on originally with grade 2 bolts. Uh, the nice thing about an Alice Jammer's Combine is that you can take all of these bolts off of the circle here and that whole cylinder will come out. You can unbolt the whole cylinder and take it out to the side. So I did take that cylinder out and I don't know if the light is showing it to you but uh, I put grade 8 bolts in there to hold the cylinder bars on. Uh, they're all matched. And then after I had them, uh, the bars held onto the, you know, uh, finger wheels or whatever you want to call them, the cylinder circles there, uh, I balanced the cylinder. So I set the end of the shaft, each shaft, you know, on a bucket and I can't remember what I used. I used something to hold the cylinder, you know, like that. And then I spun the cylinder and balanced the cylinder. Uh... So if we would turn the cylinder over here, you can see there's extra holes in the cylinder because you could change the cylinder bars, but right there's a balance bolt with a big washer on it. And uh, you just balance the cylinder so it was perfectly level. There's another balance bolt. So it looks harder than it was, uh, you know, it, and there's another balance bolt inside there. I can see that in the holes. It took, you know, maybe a half a day or a day, but since I balanced the cylinder and since I tightened all these bolts on the uh, bearing blocks for the cylinder, all the vibration has gone out of my cylinder. Uh, if you do have vibration in your cylinder at those higher RPMs, eventually the cylinder will fail on you. You'll throw a cylinder bar and, and uh, uh, don't be panicked by throwing a cylinder bar. I don't know if I can show it down here, but... This combine has thrown cylinder bars too. And uh, we were able to beat it back and, and keep going. Uh, in the book, they talk about this thresher plate gap. The Right before the grain enters the cylinder, there's a thresher plate right there. Uh, they talk about that gap. So I run that gap a little bit wide and I run the gap down here. 
between the concave and the cylinder. I run those gaps a little bit wide. To me, the most important thing of threshing is to keep that cylinder running fast. Uh, another difference in the 72, you can see it right there, is that you have the steel straw walkers. Uh, there still is some wood at that end, but the whole walker assembly on the 72s is a heavier, heavier assembly, and so it has held together better. We haven't had a problem with that. Moving on. There's the Alice Chalmers decal. Kind of hard to read. That decal has faded a little bit. So over here at this end, uh, there in one of my videos I've talked about it. That is the intensity of the shake on the pan, and I have it, you know, a lot of guys ran it right in that middle hole, and you can tell how the middle hole's wallowed out. Uh, I have put it in the far hole, which is the minimum amount of shake. Uh, Clover is very light, and it does not take a lot of shake in your clean grain shoe. So, looking in here, there is that screen I talked about, and I've had to repair it a little bit, but that is a 1 12th screen and uh may be hard to see but there is my reinforcement on the shaker shoe uh very simple reinforcement i took some uh oh looks like 3 16 flat stock by three and uh ground out all the rivets and i put that plate in there on the shaker shoe uh i don't know why but i always had that side of the shaker shoe breaking out on me this side never broke out see that was what the factory had it had that uh maybe an inch and a quarter and a size thinner plate on it right there. So this side was where I always had the trouble. And so I ground out the rivets and I replaced it with a bigger piece of flat stock and I bolted it in there. And that I haven't, haven't had problems with the shaker shoe after I did that. Uh, there's a little more weight on the shaker shoe, but it has held together fine. And there is that 1 12th round hole clean screen. We did pull that out and clean it yesterday. And so I was able to see the backside and it is a 1 12th. But that is the correct screen combination for red clover. Uh, moving up to the front here. So guys we're on the front of the combine here and the last thing I wanted to show you was the reinforcing I did to stop vibration in the cylinder. Uh, so from the factory on this side of the cylinder you can see that gold bolt there that's a grade 8 bolt. Uh, from the factory I think they had well on that side they just had uh, uh, 3 8 bolts. Uh, but I bored those holes out and I put those bigger bolts in. And uh, even after I put the bigger bolts in, I still had vibration. This combine did have some life, had been used quite a bit. And so, not wanting vibration, I set my cylinder where I wanted, and you can see the weld there, right close to the bolt. I welded this side of the cylinder solid. Uh, but after, uh, you know, the we had uh, uh, stockpiled cylinder bars. There's where one of the cylinder bars came off and tried to come through the cylinder. We had stockpiled cylinder bars and uh, when I balanced that cylinder I was down to my last set of good cylinder bars. And so I really didn't want to ruin another set of cylinder bars. It was my last set. And so after I put the bolts in there to tighten the plate down I still had a little bit of uh, still had a little bit of play. And so we welded the cylinder up and then you can see that bolt there. That's the bolt there that raises the cylinder up and down. I got it shimmed exactly where I wanted it and uh, I made that bolt solid. I put a couple uh, bigger nuts in there and I made that bolt that holds the cylinder up or down. I tightened that and then I put the two that crimped the plate to the plate and then I welded it. And uh, after I did that all the plays out of the cylinder. Obviously you'll not be able to adjust this machine and do other crops with it but uh, after you throw a few cylinder bars off and tear a few things up, you just got to decide uh, what you're going to do with the combine, how you're going to use it, and try and get the maximum life out of it. So that is pretty much the extent of the modifications I have made to this combine to make it into a reliable clover machine.
Uh, that being said, after I've made those modifications, uh, I've run the combine now a little over five years and haven't had a bit of problem. Uh, the last problem that I did have is that I am running the combine with this tractor, the 596 Massey, and uh, I like my cab when I'm combining clover seed. <laughs> So the, the problem that we have there is that's a, uh, you know, 90 horsepower, 90 PTO horsepower tractor. And uh, these combines were built to be run by, uh, you know, little Alice Chalmers tractors, probably 30, 35, 40 horsepower. So I am running a little bit of horsepower through it, and uh, <clears throat> I did twist a drive shaft. Uh, that was a little bit exciting. But since we have a stockpile of parts, I was able to go get a drive shaft and make sure that it was sh true and straight and so now the old combine runs as smooth as the sewing machine you know, the combine really does need to run smooth when you're at full rpms you know when you're at 540 pto uh, and under load you need to look back and that combine needs to be like a sewing machine it needs to be very smooth yeah they're so lightly built that if you do have vibration in them it's going to come back and haunt you so thanks guys.